Hello, high level listeners. Thank you very much for joining us for episode nine of our advanced English podcast series. Today, in episode nine, we're going to talk about going out to dinner with your friends. Before we dive into that, though, let's introduce ourselves. My name's Mark, the British voice here on High Level Listening, sharing insults, insults, insights into <laughs> British culture, as well as vocabulary, phrases, and expressions you're more likely to hear in the UK. We try to just insult each other, but here, hi, everybody. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us for our latest episode. We're going to be talking about heading out and going to get something to eat with our friends. So thank you so much. My name is Kat. I'm the American voice here on High Level Listening. I offer insight into American culture, and I hope that I can help you feel like you're speaking a bit more casually and a bit more easygoing than kind of that rigid textbook English. So basically what we're going to do is we've set up these episodes to have two separate scripts. So you can hear side by side the American and the British style of speaking. And we'll start off with my script. It's American. Americanized just a little bit. We didn't go overboard or anything. And I'll go ahead and get started with my script. Then we will listen to Mark and his British script. And then we'll move on to breaking the language down for you. We'll take our favorite expressions line by line and tell you what they mean and why they might be different from the US to the UK. So let's go ahead and get started. Mark, do you want to start the question off? The question today is, what do you usually do when you go out to dinner with your friends? I love getting together and going out to eat with our close friends. We usually pick some place everyone likes, maybe a new burger or a pizza place. Usually we like to start with some apps for the table. Then for our entrees or our main course, each person orders whatever they want. There is usually a lot of choice in American restaurants. We can't always resist something sweet for dessert, but usually by the end of the meal, I'm stuffed. When the check comes, it's pretty common to just split it evenly and we just pay for what we ordered. So Mark, what do you usually do when you go out to dinner with your friends? When I go out for dinner with my mates, it's always a good laugh. We rarely go anywhere fancy, so we usually end up in our local pub or a nice spot we all know and like. First, we get some starters and nibble on them while we chat about what's been going on with us. Then we order our mains. I often go for classic stuff like fish and chips or a pie. We don't always do dessert because we're usually stuffed after the main course. And then at the end of the meal, we tend to split the bill. It's just easier that way. Okay, so like usual, cat script and mind script were quite similar. We had a lot of the same ideas and said the same kind of things, but we used different expressions and different phrases throughout. So we'll choose some of the most interesting and useful phrases and talk about them a bit more, explain them, give some examples, and let you use them in your daily life. So let's go back to the beginning of the scripts. Uh, so Kat, do you like going out to dinner? So I said, I love getting together and going out to eat with our close friends. So I picked out three different phrases here. Getting together, going out to eat, and getting together, going out to eat with our close friends. Getting together is to spend time with other people. I love getting together with friends. I love getting together with girlfriends. I love getting together with my family. That's when we get together, we spend time together. Going out to eat, going out to eat. I actually noticed in both of our scripts, I said the word restaurant once. We talk about, and we'll talk a little bit more, spots, places, but we only said the word restaurant once. Mm -hmm. Restaurant is actually, it's not the nicest word. Going out to eat implies that we're going to a restaurant. So if I say, hey, do you want to go out to eat? 
we wouldn't be going outside in the garden to eat. We would be going out to a restaurant. So going out to eat is kind of the short way to say going out to eat at a restaurant. I love getting together and going out to eat with our close friends. Um, spending time with friends at dinner means there's going to be a lot of talking. I don't often invite people I don't really know that well out to eat dinner. Um, it would involve a lot of talking. Maybe I don't know them that well. So I often talk about going out to eat with close friends, friends that I know quite well and that we like spending time together. So what about you, Mark? Do you like going out to dinner with friends? Mm, yes, I do. When I go out for dinner with my mates, it's always a good laugh. So again, we've tried to use more British words for my script. Going out for dinner with my mates. My mates are my friends, not necessarily workmates or roommates. My mates are my friends. So like Kat said, her close friends, I go out to dinner with my mates. It's always a good laugh. A good laugh is quite a British phrase as well. A good laugh means a good time. A good time, a fun time. It's often used to describe an event. So the party was a good laugh. The dinner, dinner last night, was a good laugh. If someone calls you and says, oh yeah, did you have fun last night? Yeah, it was a good laugh. So a good laugh is a good time, a fun time. We all had a good laugh. You'll also hear my British pronunciation of laugh. It's that long A you get from bath. Chance, answer, fast. <laughs> we laugh. Uh, and the yeah. American version would be laugh, 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 laugh. Laugh at the difference between laugh and laugh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't even do it. It goes straight up my nose. Laugh. Uh huh. Laugh. <laughs> yeah, I can't even laughing, do it. Laughing, laughing, and laugh, 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 laughing, laughing. A good laugh. Laughing. Laughing. <laughs> yes, so I, I like going out for dinner with my mates. It's always a good laugh. We always have a good time. Uh, in your case, where do you usually go for dinner? So we usually pick some place everyone likes. Maybe a new burger or a pizza place. Now, I did mention that we don't actually say the word restaurant here. We've got a pizza place, a burger place, a seafood place, a Chinese place, um, an Indian place. When I say this type of food and then I say place, we actually mean restaurant. So restaurant, restaurant is a very difficult word for a lot of my students to, st to say. Um, it's spelled restaurant, restaurant, but we've gotten used to saying restaurant, restaurant, almost like it's spelled S-T-R-A-U-N-T. And how annoying is that, that we say restaurant, we make you pronounce it, and then we don't even really use it that much in conversation. So here I've said we pick some place like a burger place, a pizza place, a steak place, a seafood place, and we mean a restaurant, a steak house, a pizzeria. Yes, these are nice, good vocabulary words, but just commonly chatting with friends, it's just a place. It's just a pizza place. Hey, what kind of food is it? Oh, I think it's a seafood place. Oh, that sounds good. Let's go. What about you, Mark? Where do you usually go for dinner with friends? We rarely go anywhere fancy, so we usually end up in our local pub or a nice spot we all know and like. So we rarely go anywhere fancy. A fancy restaurant would be, yeah, an expensive restaurant, uh, a luxurious one, maybe a place that you need to make a booking before you go because it's so popular and exclusive uh, that you need a reservation. That probably means the food is also expensive, but the quality should be good. 
the chefs and the the waiters should be very professional and very good. But we rarely go anywhere fancy. We usually end up in our local pub or a nice spot we all know and like. Um, if you know anything about the UK, you've probably heard of pubs. Um, I could talk about pubs for a long time and what they're like, but a pub is basically a bar plus food. You can order a quite a big variety of food in a pub. You can go to a pub just for drinks and then go, or you can have drinks and food and sit down at a table. So a local pub is very common, a very common place for British people to have dinner in. And uh, the alternative is a nice spot. So Kat was saying place, a burger place, a pizza place, or a steak place. A similar phrase is spot. A spot also means a place. Because we're talking about dinner, we can assume that spot means restaurant. With place, you say the type of food that they serve. So steak restaurant, steak place. With spot, you can share your opinion about it. A nice spot, a cool spot, an expensive spot, a trendy spot. So we right. use spot with an opinion or an adjective. Most... That makes sense because I wouldn't say like a steak spot. That sounds yeah. kind of weird. A, a nice spot. A steak place. Oh, that's a nice spot. Yeah, that's a mm -hmm. nice place. Sure. Yeah, there's this cool new spot. It's a pizza place. Do you want to go? Yeah, so we rarely go anywhere fancy. We don't want to make a reservation. We don't want to spend a lot of money. A nice spot or a local pub. That sounds nice to me um, in the UK. Just to add to the word fancy, I don't think we use the word fancy if we're being a little bit more serious. I think if people actually like to go to fancy restaurants, they don't call them fancy. They call mm. them a nice restaurant, a nice mm. restaurant, an upscale restaurant, an upscale an up restaurant. And so I think when we use the word fancy, we're like, oh, that's a surprise. How nice is that? Oh, it's fancy La here. Oh right. Like you don't usually go to these places. Right. Exactly. Right. So if you if you like the more just kind of common, uh, easygoing places, and then all of a sudden you think of, oh, well, that's fancy. But if you are used to that upscale, nice, those nice restaurants, where you don't usually don't use the word fancy, you would say, yeah, it's a nice restaurant. It's a nice restaurant. And then if I'm used to going to the bars or the pubs or just the easygoing cheap places, I would say, wow, that's fancy. fancy. Yeah, Ooh, <laughs> that's lobster. Fancy. fancy. Ooh, very nice. Caviar. Fancy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. But your restaurant, what do you usually order or what do you order first? So um, usually we like to start with some apps for the table. Now, that's actually a very common phrase that the server will come to your table. Can I get you started with anything? Some apps for the table or some appetizers for the table. Um, apps, along with the apps that you have on your phone, that's short for applications. And then apps at the beginning of your meal, the American appetizers. Appetizers are little finger foods or just a small salad or soup that you would have at the beginning of your meal. Now, for me, your meal involves um, the, whole, the whole course. So it's the first course. Your second course is usually the main meal, and then you continue on to dessert. So this is all part of your meal but you would have a, you know, maybe some snacks or something light at the beginning. Now, if you're kind of a foodie, you might want to share some different appetizers so you get to taste everything. With some of our friends that also like to eat lots of nice food, we like to share one for the table. So we have some appetizers for the table. That means that we'll be sharing our food, letting everybody taste some of the apps, some of the appetizers. Now, what about you, Mark? What do you normally order at the beginning of the meal? First, we get some starters and nibble on them while we chat. But yes, in the US, they are apps or appetizers. If you open a British menu, the first thing will be starters. Mm -hmm. 
But it's the same thing. These are small meals. They're small plates. It could be bread, soup, or some bite-sized things to share. And you eat these just to, you know, get your appetite going. I don't want to fill up. I don't want to be full. I want some room for my next course, the big meal, the main meal. But uh, yeah, sometimes you can eat starters while you think about your main course. Mm -hmm. And we get some starters and nibble on them while we chat. So these are small meals. A starter is often a small piece of food. So to nibble is to take a small bite, like Maybe you just have tortilla chips or something small. To nibble is to take a little bite. So small food and then a small bite to nibble. So maybe I just nibbled on some crisps or I don't want to have a mouth full of food while I'm talking to my friends. So I just nibble. That way I can eat mm. quickly and I can chat. So if you just eat small pieces of something, you nibble. We definitely use this as well, nibbles, uh, bites and nibbles. I think it's probably more popular in the UK. Mm -hmm. We might more naturally say snacks and to snack on something. So the snacks would be little finger foods that you can pop into your mouth, right? So absolutely. Mm -hmm. I definitely would use that as well. And don't take too much of a bite. Just just a just a nibble. If I'm mm -hmm. sharing my food, don't eat the whole thing. Just just a nibble. Just a little night night. Mm -hmm. A little a little bite, please. Just a little bite. Yes. I can imagine feeding like a bit of my food to a cat. Like a cat only has a small mouth and it just nibbles on your food and just a small bite. Just a nibble. And Unless then they, they and then really yeah. run off and take it take it away. But yes, ideally, mm -hmm. just a little nibble. Just please. a little nibble. Just a little nibble. Yeah. So if you nibble on some food, you're just taking small bites and eating small amounts. All right. So Kat's had her apps. I've had my starter. What's next after that? So then for our entrees or main course... Each person orders whatever they want. There's usually a lot of choice in American restaurants. So, um, I know one, some of the biggest confusion is what is an entree? Well, entree in Europe means a starter or an appetizer. So an entree in America, that is your main meal. Okay, that is the big plate that you receive that you're going to um have as most of the food that you're going to eat. So we can call them entrees, or if it just makes it easier, you don't have to remember which one is which, you can call it the main course, your main course. So at the beginning of the meal, your appetizer, little snacks, main course is your main dish. And then finally, at the end, we have dessert. It's pretty common for people to do one of the courses, two of the courses, maybe um, appetizer, main course, or main course and dessert. If you're doing all three, you must be celebrating something nice or just going out to eat. You want to get all the food that you can eat. <laughs> now, each person orders whatever they want. It's actually not very common in American culture to share meals. So we can split a meal. Uh, I know when I go back to America, but we serve such huge portions of food. It ends up being that it's much easier to split the meal, but we don't put the meal in the middle and eat off of the plate. We will get two separate plates. So for some of my students that have lots of food in the middle and everybody picks what they want. That's not as common in American culture and definitely not at the American restaurants. You will each order your own plate, your own dish, and you will eat off of your own plate. So we can split those kind of meals, of course, but then the restaurant will split them, put them on two plates so you don't have to eat off of each other's plate. Mm. What yes, about you, much. Mark? Mm -hmm. Sorry, it's very much like my food, my plate. Yeah. This is my food. 
yeah, we don't have that communal sharing idea. Exactly. With the big dish in the middle. Yes. The selfish that way. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, for me, after the starters, then we order our mains. I often go for classic stuff like fish and chips or a pie. So in the US, on the menu, entrees, sorry, apps, then entrees or your main course. In the UK, starters and then mains. I don't even say course, just mains. Right. My main, our mains. Even the waiter will say, what would you like for your main? Or what would you like for your mains, everyone? So in the UK, we just say mains. I often go for, I often choose, classic stuff, because I'm from the UK, fish and chips, or a pie. Um, in the UK, you will see pies under main course, uh, not desserts, because pies in the UK have meat inside. For example, there's chicken pie, uh, beef pie, steak pie, steak pie. They're all delicious, and I love them. And I always eat them when I have the chance. These are common items on pub or restaurant menus in the UK. So if somebody says they had a pie as lunch, they didn't have a sweet apple pie or blueberry pie. I had they probably had something savory. Exactly. Yeah. I know this is also big in Australia, Africa, New Zealand, the meat pie thing. Can you get meat pies in the States? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. We have something okay. that's pretty popular in the south of the United States, chicken pot pie. Oh, yeah, of course. Right. So, yeah, your main is always the biggest meal, the largest meal, probably the most expensive one. And you might be pretty full afterwards. So in your case, do you still get dessert at the end? Well, we can't always resist something sweet for dessert, but usually I'm stuffed. So um, we can't always resist something sweet for dessert. This sounds like my sister. My sister has a huge sweet tooth. Even if she's stuffed, even if she is completely full, you know, maybe I could have a little something sweet, maybe. So even though we've eaten everything, she says, oh, I'm so full. I can't eat anymore. If the server comes over and offers, uh, hi, would you care for a dessert? She all of a sudden has room for just a little something, just maybe a bite or two. So what usually happens is we end up kind of splitting a dessert, something sweet to cleanse the palate, right? And since she has a sweet tooth, we usually, we usually end up splitting it, even though I'm stuffed even though I'm t really too full. Um, the phrase that we usually use is we can make room. So we think of our stomach is completely full. It's stuffed. But then if the dessert comes, maybe we can make a little room, make a little space that we could just fit the perfect amount of dessert in there. So if you're going to make room for something, that means that even though you're full, you could still eat a little bit more. Uh -huh. Do you have any room for dessert usually, Mark? Mm. Uh, we don't always do dessert because we're usually stuffed after the main course. So yeah. Stuffed, again, means really full. I can't eat anymore. Even if the waiter comes over and says, yes, would you like a dessert? You'll say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm stuffed. I can't. Uh, stuffed is also the word we use for cushions and pillows. So that's stuffed with... Uh, stuffed wool, animals. Stuffed animals, a stuffed teddy bear. So you're really, really full. It's almost uncomfortable how much, uh, how full you are. So sometimes we're stuffed as well. So we don't always do dessert. Um, you're probably familiar with do. You do exercise, do laundry, do washing up. But we also use it here, do dessert. We make dessert sound like an activity because if you do dessert, then you get the full restaurant experience. Three courses, starter, a main course, and dessert. That's something, or that's an experience you usually only get in a restaurant. 
when I eat dinner at home, I don't have three courses. I make a main course and that's it. But in a restaurant, I can get three things. So I'm going to do some starters, have a main course, and then do dessert. So do dessert sounds a little bit like a, a treat or something special that I don't normally get. You can ask that or say that to other people around the table. You're like, hey, do you want to do dessert? Do you want to do desserts? And they might say, oh, yes, let's do it. Let's split one. Or say, oh, sorry, I'm stuffed. So yeah, you can do dessert if you feel like you want to enjoy the real restaurant experience and do something a bit special. For us, we don't really do dessert. That's not really a thing. We get dessert. We get mm. dessert. Hey, do you wanna do you wanna get a cheesecake? Do you wanna get a, a brownie? Do you wanna mm. get a do you wanna get a <laughs> do you wanna get a dessert? Do you wanna mm. split a dessert? Yeah, sure. absolutely. Yeah, you can say that in the UK as well. Everyone would understand. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've eaten the meal. The plates are clean and empty. We finished everything. Now it's time for the bill. In the States, who usually pays? When the check comes, it's pretty common to just split it evenly or just pay for what we ordered. We often use the word the check. However, the kind of I always think of in the movies or in TV shows, people are saying, check, please. However. Um, most restaurants and most servers, they have already given you the check. Once we kind of finish up the end of the meal, um, most servers kind of want you to move on eventually. So they will just slide the check down on the table and say, whenever you're ready. Or when you decline dessert, say, oh, no, sorry, we really couldn't. I'm stuffed. They might say, OK, um, well, I'll get the bill for you guys. Would you like separate checks or do you want to pay together? Separate mm. checks. Separate checks. That means that they will come out with the little black billfold, the little black, I don't even know what that's little called. Thing. Yeah, the little booklet that they keep the receipt in. And if they give us separate checks, that means I pay for what I got, you pay for what you ordered, and they are all on separate checks which is actually really convenient and, or we can pay it all together and split it down the middle. So if there's two couples and we split it down the middle, one couple pays 50%, the other couple pays 50%. Some people, um, a lot of my students use the phrase going Dutch. We, it, yes, I've seen that phrase written and I know what it is, but I would never ask my friends to go Dutch. Um, or I wouldn't refer to it as going Dutch. I would simply say, um, yeah, we just split it. We split it down the middle or we split it 50-50 or we had separate checks, meaning I paid for my bill, you paid for your bill. Mm. Yeah, nice and convenient because so many times in restaurants you see everybody with the calculator. Calculator, yeah. <laughs> like, okay, one beer, and we don't then, need to do uh, any of that in the U.S. The the server, almost at most restaurants have already done that for us. So the computer um, will print out separate checks, making it easy for all of us to pay our own way. Mm, yeah. In the U.K., it's quite similar. The end of the meal, we tend to split the bill. It's just easier that way. So, yeah, in the U.K., it's very common to split the bill. Uh, if there's four people, you pay 25% each. If it's two people, you pay 50% each. Or if it's two couples, one couple pays 50% and you pay the other 50%. So split the bill by the number of people. Uh, only if it's a very special occasion, like a birthday, an anniversary, or a big celebration, someone will pay for everyone or someone will pick up the bill and pay for it. Uh, in the UK, we expect people to split the bill. Yeah, I would if, say the same. Right? Even if it's my idea, even if I invite you and I'm like, hey, do you want to go and have dinner tonight? Even if I invite you and it's my idea and I choose the restaurant, I still expect you to pay your half, at least what you ate or split it 50-50 with me. So. 
that's very common among friends. There's no expectation to get the whole bill and then let someone else get it next time. We just keep it simple. You pay half, I pay the other half. So that's what to expect. I think that would be the same for Americans as well, especially just going out with friends that you know quite well. I would say 99% of the time, we would just pay for our own bills. But like you said, if it is a special occasion we and you do want to pay, the nicest way to say that is, it's my treat. It's mm. my treat. And if someone says to you, oh, I want to go to this new restaurant, it's my treat. That means that they mm. are going to pay for you. Okay. So you'd need to tell the person in advance if you're going to be paying for them, because it would be unlikely that I might go to a fancy restaurant um, and maybe I don't even want to split the bill because it's too expensive. But you could say, mm. no, 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 it's my treat. It's uh-huh. my treat. And then you think, okay, I could do fancy. <laughs> right. <Get the bill. laughs> if you're yeah. paying, if you're paying, oh, yes. I could do fancy. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Put your no no no, put your put your wallet away. It's my treat. Like you give the card to the waiter. Like, no, 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 put that away. It's my treat. No, but really put that away. Don't put your credit card on oh, the internet. This is expired. Don't worry. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm really, still... put it away, Mark. Yeah. Put it away. <laughs> It's my treat to all our listeners. It's, it's my treat. Yeah, go crazy. Go next. There you are, guys. <laughs> yeah. Next round anyway. is on me. <laughs> mm. Yeah, the next episode will be on bankruptcy and yeah. fraud and, yeah, and crime. Absolutely. <laughs> Put it away. Put it away. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. We really do appreciate you listening and watching all of our videos. We are just overwhelmed by all of the support that everyone has been giving us. We love to read your messages, and it really helps us to learn more about our students, to give some feedback or some new ideas for new lessons. We love to read them. We read every single comment, and we try to reply to every single one. So again, thank you so much to all of our subscribers and anyone that has been following us, even for five or six years. We've just been so overwhelmed and so uh, delighted by everybody that's been joining us recently. Mm. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for your lovely comments. If you have any questions about this episode, anything we said that you didn't catch or a phrase that we used that we didn't explain, you can always ask us. And again, we read every comment. If you have a grammar question, a vocab question, we do answer and we'll give you some examples. So if you've missed anything at all or want a bit more, just leave us a message and we'll get back to you very quickly. Right. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, We will see you again very, very soon. Thank you so much for watching again and goodbye. Bye. Thank you.